Hi, my name is Professor Robin Ward. I'm the Acting Executive Dean of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Queensland. And I'm here with a special guest today, Professor Leo Siawani, who is here from Auctioner Healthcare System and is also the lead for the Auctioner Clinical Unit here in UQ. Welcome, Leo. Well, thank you, Robin. It's good to be here. Great. So I know you've left uh, hot weather in New Orleans, but can you tell us a little bit about what it's like working as a health professional in New Orleans? A little bit about yourself first. Did my training uh, at Loyola University in New Orleans, did my uh, medical school at Louisiana State University in New Orleans, and then uh, they finally said, you gotta get away from here, young man. Yeah. And so I went to the University of Alabama in Birmingham, the, the home of the Kirkland Clinic and Harrison's, uh, one of the true uh, uh, fathers of, of medicine in the U.S., and did my residency training at the University of Alabama in Birmingham. Returned to do my fellowship, uh, pulmonary critical care fellowship at Auctioner LSU, and that was my first introduction to Auctioner. Right. And I actually started at Auctioner as a lung transplant pulmonologist. I did an extra year of fellowship. Right. But I have always been a teacher at heart. I've always really enjoyed mentoring and coaching uh, residents or students. Um, and quickly found myself in the medical education track. Uh, and that's led me to this incredible opportunity to be the head of school of this one of a kind, uh, fantastic program and partnership between Auctioner and uh, the University of Queensland. So can you just tell me, you just mentioned how unique this program is and it is truly unique. What, what is it like running this program? Why is it so unique? Well, the students really are the heart of the program. Um, and we take American students from all over the U.S. Uh, that really are looking for a global perspective in healthcare. Um, and in particular, I think they're drawn to Australia, one, from our, our common uh, language uh, uh, and some of our common shared history. Uh, two, because I think they, Australia is just cool. Uh, but they see a different healthcare system. They see a healthcare system based in primary care and a healthcare system that works. In today's day and age in the U.S., when we're going through so much change and there's so much debate about healthcare in the U.S. and healthcare reform, our students will be positioned when they come back to America to practice medicine to really be leaders and have a real voice in what healthcare in the U.S. should look like. But they have a unique perspective that if you've just trained in the U.S., you won't have. And I think that really positions them to be uh, really future leaders in medicine. And from your perspective, what do the Australian students really get out of that experience of being trained with Americans? Yeah, no, I, I think another unique aspect is the true melting pot that the Faculty of Medicine is. Uh, so you have these bright Australians, Canadians, Americans, from South, students from Southeast Asia, all coming together to study medicine in one place. And they're developing lifelong relationships and friendships. Uh, and again, I, that is also helping us look at ourselves as citizens of the world. And I think as, as we tackle healthcare reform, not just in the States, but we look at, at, at global health, I think our students are really going to have a, 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 a unique perspective and a voice on, on what global health should look like. And you've seen Australian students come over to Auctioner and work in the healthcare system there as med students. What, what's it like for them? Uh, well, I can tell you what it's like for the faculty. They're truly loved. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the accent just gives them away. Uh, and everybody wants to work with the Australians. Uh, you know, they're, they're, again, they're just cool. Uh, so, no, I think if, well, what the Australians will see in the U.S. is they'll see an integrated healthcare system. Uh, and Oxford is a group practice integrated healthcare system. It was founded in the model of the Mayo Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic. And we think we're, we're a model forward for the U.S. When you have this large group practice of 29 affiliated hospitals um, where physicians work together in teams of specialists in primary care to deliver health care. And I think the Australians will see that. And I think they'll also see a little bit of a different perspective on the way we train medical students, where we embed them in the team early on, even in year three, they're responsible, they have responsibilities for the healthcare team. And I think the students really appreciate that. They appreciate being the first 
person through the door to do a history and physical on the, on a patient, and then being able to report that out uh, and feel like that they're making a difference uh, in the care of that patient. One of the things I think we don't really understand in Australia is, is what a medical student in the US needs to go through in order to be able to practice medicine. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about what, what all this USMLE and these terms we hear, what does that mean? Yeah, you know, there is there is an external uh, standard that medical students need to pass through to be able to practice in the US, and that is the United States Medical Licensing Exam. It has three parts. The first part is to make sure they have a core competency in basic science, um, and that is usually taken after year two of medical school. The second part is a little bit more about the clinical aspects of medicine, and that's usually taken in year four. And then the third part gets a little bit more towards the management of disease, and that is taken in their intern year. Um, you have to complete all three four parts, and you have to finish at least one year of training out in addition to medical school to get a license in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, it's a competitive process in the United States. Uh, the match is uh, to, to become a registrar or resident. It's not an allocation process. It's a competitive match. Uh, and so the students um, really feel a lot of pressure of making an early career decision and entering into this competitive process. But the University of Queensland uniquely positions them and the Oxford Partnership, where we do a lot of mentoring, career advice, career coaching. Um, we also support them in not only making the right decision on what do they want to do when they grow up, but we also support them on and making sure they get a competitive application, interviewing skills, uh, and so that we make them the best they can be to get the career uh, that they want. And in your mind, what, what do you describe to students and to your colleagues about what really makes a good doctor, a great doctor? Uh, you know, I, I think uh, a lot of students think it's, it's the great science and having a, 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 a good understanding of pathophysiology that, that makes a good doctor, and that's just not true. You know, what really makes a good doctor or the virtues that that student brings to the practice of medicine. And I'm talking about the empathy, compassion, presence of being there with patients, uh, the courage, um, the sacrifices that you have to make for your, for your patients, um, the communication skills, uh, and the teamwork. Because I think modern medicine is very different than when it was practiced 80 years ago. Uh, we now care for patients as teams, and that ability to communicate and work within a team are really critical to be a good doctor. Great. One of the other um, things that we've talked about just recently is the relationship between research and that's happening at UQ and Oxnote, where it's primarily been a healthcare delivery system, but now you're starting to get into some of the research activities. So what are they and how do they fit with the medical student experience? Yeah, the common question I get is, why UQ? Why, why did Oxford decide to partner with uh, one of the top universities in the world? And then I tell them, that you just answered the question, is the quality of the partner at the University of Queensland uh, and the research uh, that really drew us uh, uh, from the Oxford side together? Um, we're a big clinical entity. We don't have basic science researchers, but we saw that if we picked the right partner, we really could could do a lot in translational research. Uh, and that partnership is growing. It allows students to start projects uh, in years one and two with some great basic science researchers, and then finish those projects in year three or four at Oxford. Also, the UQ curriculum has this incredible opportunity for students who want to be clinical scientists. Uh, they can do dual degrees and get an MPhil um, at the same time they're getting their doctor of medicine, or they can do an MD PhD program. Um, and we are attracting those students that really want to be future clinician scientists. Yeah. And just in conclusion, I wonder if you can just perhaps tell us a story about perhaps one of the UQ students, UQ Oxford students that's ended up in a hospital somewhere in the United States who you think is doing a great job. Uh, well, there's so many stories that are you know, limited to one. Um, well, you know, I think I'm going to give you two. Uh, you know, um, so 
Chantel is is uh, was featured in the Wall Street Journal uh, article. Uh, she's a she's a student from from New York. Went to Columbia University, came down and was part of the Oxford UQ program. Graduated from our program, got a core uh, training in primary care that where she was exposed to here here at UQ, which I think is another important element about our partnership that. We are finding that our students uh, are choosing primary care specialties. I think it has a lot to do with the, Ox the the Australian healthcare system and all the positive mentors and role models they see in primary care in this system. So she chose a primary care career and then she chose a rural primary care career. Uh, and so she's a family practice resident in Bogalusa, Louisiana. And if I can tell you anything about Bogalusa, Louisiana is that it's rural and they need doctors. Um, and so I think she's been a great success story about what the partnership is able to do. It's able to meet a need in the United States where we have an incredible shortage of physicians in rural areas, in particular primary care mm -hmm. physicians. Um, and she found her calling through our program. Wow. Um, that, that's a great story. And then I'd also like to emphasize a, a, a story of a student who's decided to stay in the Oxford and train and, and do their residency and fellowship training uh, uh, at Oxford. Um, and we've had quite a few, but Ross Hoffman was in the original graduating class of nine students from our partnership. Um, he stayed on at Oxford and did his internal medicine residency training, and then stayed on uh, uh, following uh, uh, one of his mentor's footsteps, I won't say which one, but he's doing a pulmonary critical care fellowship. <laughs> Uh, at Oxford LSU, the combined program. Uh, he's currently a second year fellow and doing fantastic. And, and he's another success story of why we, why we are interested in this partnership and so proud of it. Um, because we're training students uh, in a unique global perspective and the UQ Oxford way to stay in South Louisiana and care for our patients. Great. That's a great note to end on. So I want to thank you for um, speaking to me today and sharing your experiences around Oxnard and UQ and what our students mean, not only in Australia or, or the US, but the impact they potentially can have across the world. So thank you.